Hello, Jim here. Trading options is a great way to make some extra income. Now, you don't necessarily need big accounts to do it. Today, I'm going to share with you how you can actually have an account as small as one to two thousand dollars and produce some pretty good income from that. So, I'm going to share with you a couple of trades I've done recently, and these are on smaller companies, companies under twenty-five dollars. So, I'll share with you details about those two companies, and also share with you the trades that I made over the last couple of months that actually have produced some pretty incredible income. So stay tuned. I think it's going to be well worth your while. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, the first company I wanted to talk about is Chewy. Chewy is a company I've had in my watch list a long time. It only started making money, I believe, last year. It might have been 2022. I will add companies that I like to my watch list that aren't making money, but I typically will not do trades on them unless they're profitable and making making money. Um, okay, they're currently twenty seven ten, but they've been trading right around the twenty five dollar range recently, and I believe they were right around twenty three or twenty four when I I did sell the vertical put credit spread on them. But you can see they're not overly priced earnings per share. And PE is is isn't too bad. I mean, they're making ninety four cents a share, and their PE price to earnings is twenty twenty eight. Which for a growth company, it, it's not too far out of line. Um, I do believe if they drop back down to the low twenties, you know, again that'll be like twenty four twenty five PE. Now, if you look at earnings, their earnings have been good. They do have earnings coming up soon, so. If I was to make a new trade on them, I would probably wait till A28 just to see what earnings look like. Uh, but again, since they're not that expensive and they've beaten earnings a lot and they beat it by a lot last time, I would, my guess or my bet would be that they would beat earnings again. So you might want to trade, make a trade before earnings. It, it being If earnings were farther away, I would say definitely, you know, don't wait. Maybe you should do a trade if, if this is a company you'd like. Of course, always do your own due diligence. Be sure this is a company you want to invest in. I, I use them. I like them. Um, so again, their earnings look good. Their profitability could be better. They do have a good return on common equity. Not, not great, but pretty good. And return on um, assets look good. A little low. Growth is, is good. They do not have any debt, so their their numbers look good. Their fundamentals look good. They also have a really nice site. They do a nice job of providing you a lot more detail, and you can, you know, find things easier. Like a lot of people will say, well, they're going to lose to Amazon, but I, I go back to them versus trying to find things on Amazon. I do see, you know, I'm able to find the food that I need, the toys that I need for my dogs. Um, and I've used it quite a bit. It's, it's worked out fairly well. So now let's go back. So Chew, Chewy does well. Um, they're growing nicely. Their fundamentals look good. So let's jump into what the trade looks like. So here's the trade. I did it back on 628. I sold four contracts and it's a $2.50 spread. So each contract is required capital is like $250. So for a small account, you don't necessarily have to do four contracts like, like I did. You could do one contract or two contracts. Um, <clears throat> I did four because it that's the size that fits nicely in my account. Um, and, you know, this is a, a bigger account. This is in my IRA. So the first trade, I made 282 and that's how I came up with this seven eighteen eighty. So the required capital is a thousand dollars minus the two eighty two, and then so that the initial required capital is seven eighteen. Now that could have gone down going forward with the next trade, um, but I, I like to use it at this at this level here. So then I did another trade where I rolled, and I brought in another two seventy two seventy three. So almost the same amount, very close to what I brought in the first time. And I brought in a total of $556.52. And with the required capital of $715, this is like a 78% return. This isn't adjusted for yearly in literally only two months. Now, currently, this trade is fairly profitable. I could 
probably close it for 60 or $70. I'll probably, if it gets up to close to 30, I probably will close it. If you do only have an account with $1,000, you really can't handle assignment. So you, you do have to manage these trades. You do have to close you know, each trade versus allowing it to get assigned. So um, it's something you would need to keep track of and pick like a profitability level. So, and most of the brokerages provide that. So you'll see it'll have a P and L. And then when you reach that, you know, say you want to get out when it's 50% profitable, as well as have an amount, you know, what you're willing to lose. So say you lose a 50 bucks, well, then you want to get out at that loss at 50 bucks, or maybe that's a 10, 10% loss or a 5% loss. But when you're starting with the small accounts, I, I'm fine with having these assigned to me. I actually probably wouldn't mind it at, at all. But again, with a very small account, a $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 account, you can't handle too many of these. So it becomes critical to really manage the trades. So that's what you know, Chewy looks like now, again, I was just going to look through the notes. Chewy has been around a long time, but just recently started making money. First profit was Q3 2022. No DAG, good year over year earnings, good growth and okay profitability. So for me, if I get assigned this company, I could see them growing and maybe even be a takeover target down the road potentially, but they, they do have their own moat. They they provide a good service that would, would be difficult to replicate. Um, so let's next jump into Marathon Digital, Mara. And it's another company that's fairly inexpensive. It's even less expensive than Chewy. And um, let's jump into that and talk about it. Now, Mara, Dip Marathon Digital Holdings, is a Bitcoin miner. I'm not a Bitcoin person, so I decided I wanted to make trades on uh, Mara primarily to learn more about Bitcoins. And I have, I've, I've, what's interesting about them is they have data centers, they produce a lot of the Bitcoins and they actually keep a lot of the Bitcoins. That's something I didn't know right off the bat. So they currently own a lot of Bitcoin. It, it's in the billions of dollars. Now, I don't know if it's 2 billion, 1 billion, 5 billion. I do know it's pretty substantial. So even though they're finances kind of look odd at times. You have to remember they own a lot of Bitcoin that they, you know, they they potentially could use or sell some of that if they needed to pay some bills, but currently they don't need to. They just keep adding to it. They do, you know, what happens with Bitcoin impacts them. So if Bitcoin's going up, they're going up. If Bitcoin's going down, they're going down. Um, so it's been an interesting company to trade on. And it, I have learned a little bit more about, you know, um, Bitcoin and you know, that whole industry, uh, which is still, you know, I've learned some, but I'm still trying to figure it out. Now, they recently missed earnings again. So they beat earnings and then they missed earnings. And they, I think going back their their earnings kind of look weird. Um, and I, I don't know, some of it may also be going directly, like I said, directly into Bitcoin's growth they have fairly good growth they're still growing quite a bit profitability looks really good too they have good return on common equity they're okay leverage wise net net income margin looks good um, they have really good capex and then return on total assets looks good uh, they don't have a lot of debt a small amount of debt i believe it's i believe it's like a 20 debt to equity ratio so it's and they have a lots lots of options volume. It's it's has plenty of volume and premium. They're always fairly easy to trade. Um, and I've been trading them about once a month. Let's jump into well, I'll take you to what their site looks like. So, you know, they have they're all over the world. I think they have what four continents that they're working, 13 data centers. They one of their claims to fame is they can do things a lot less expensive if you see some of the imaging. In the background is they do a lot with solar, they do a lot with windmills, they do that they they try to produce Bitcoin a lot cheaper than anyone else. And I do believe that they are one of the cheapest. One area that might be really interesting with them is if they get if if Bitcoin isn't as profitable down the road, they could get into other areas, you know, like cloud computing and some stuff along those lines. So 
Um, but yeah, let's look at their trades now. So I did the first trade on them back April 1st and I brought in over $400 and that's how I'm coming up with the required capital. So there are four, $4 spread. So one contract requires about $400 when you can do spreads. Um, I, again, just like with Chewy, I decided to do four contracts with them and I was able to bring the, in the 401. Then I did, I rolled in 424 and brought in another, what is that, $200. Then I rolled again in 529 and I brought in $332. And then just last week, or two weeks ago on 8.5, I rolled again and brought in another $249. Um, all together, that added up to $1,185 in premium I brought in, which equates to almost like a 99% return. It's, if you consider the return, um, not it's not yearly based. It's just $1,185 divided by $1,200. That's where you come up with the 99%. And like I said, I, I've done about one trade a month. So first one was April, so four to, well, if you want four to nine, that's five months. So I literally have done a trade almost monthly. Um, and again, I saw four vertical put credit spreads. The short was 17 and then the long was 13. And I pretty much kept it like that. I, I have not changed the spreads. Currently it is fairly in the money. So it, it is showing us a little bit of a loss. Um, but that it can jump up if Bitcoin does well early next week, it could be up around 22, 23 again fairly quickly. And then I may close it just like with Chewy. If, if you have a small account and you can't afford 100 shares of, you know, of Mara, then you would need to manage the trade. You would need to, again, pick pick a profitability level and then also pick up a loss level like a loss stop saying, you know, well, I'm. If I get 50% profitable, I'm going to get out. Or if, you know, if I take a $50, $100 loss, I'm also going to get out. Um, but if you have a larger account like five, ten thousand, 10000 then, you know, I, have, I don't own any of this. I don't own any of the Chewy. So when you combine these, it's, it's pretty substantial. So if you had a $5,000 account, which you could probably handle both of them at $17, you know, well, you probably need closer to an eight to ten thousand dollar. But you know, I find that a very few number of my positions get assigned to me. I did have two get assigned to me this month, and I think the last one that got assigned to me was back in June, um, and then before that may have been May. So I, you know, to have both get assigned to you at the same time would probably be fairly rare, and they're in very different industries. So. Um, if you could do both trades in the same account with only 2K in funds and, you know, you did use four contracts or this is what you would make. You would have started with 2K and ended with, you know, you would have added 1,185, 57 and then the 556 for Chewy and you would have come out with 37.41. So nearly doubling the account in not even six months. I do mention six months, for, but for here, it's more like four and a half to five months. And then with Chewy, it was literally only two months, not even two months. So you can see, you, you can make these kind of trades. Um, but again, what's key, if you have a really tiny account, a thousand, you know, a 2000 or a $5,000 account, you would have to manage these trades and close them if they, if got in, if they got into harm's way. Um, so this is the kind of stuff I share with my memberships. If you want to learn about my memberships, we're actually going to talk about these trades tonight. We have what's called the Traders Club meeting, and we're going to talk about should we take more risk with trades like this. We're also going to talk about bad trades, trades that have not gone as well. You know, how can we improve upon our trades and, and trading in general? And so it should be a really good discussion. And again, if you want to learn more, take a look in the description. The Trader Club meetings are open to the higher two tiers of my membership, which is the tra Trader Club membership, as well as the Coaching Club. The Investor Club, I do record the meeting that I'll be having tonight. And I usually release it Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, depending on how busy I am, so that the people in my Investor Club 
membership tier can also watch it. And I have currently, I think, 10, 12 videos in there currently. So that if you've not looked at that uh, collection within Patreon, it may be worth your while if you're currently a member. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know, is there any companies like these two that you trade um, in this way? Now, one thing I, I get a lot of people asking me about specific companies I won't look at companies or I won't consider companies that aren't making money. So if you do share one, please share a company that is making money. Um, you know, and what type of trades are you doing, especially if you have a small account? Are you doing trades like this or do you have a unique strategy that that's working well? You know, maybe something that I haven't even thought about. So um, I usually try to respond to my comments within 24, 48 hours. So um, I I'd, I'd typically reply respond to all of them. It's something I enjoy doing. It also gives me ideas for videos. So um, thank you for joining me and spending some time watching this video. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.